If you cannot hear me, just go like this, and I will take that microphone and I will use it, but I'm pretty used to being able to talk to a long group of people that way, so let me know, all right? Okay, I fell in love with UPO. Oh, I don't even know how long ago, maybe about five or six years ago, I went to an art escape and somebody gave me a piece of used po. And I decided, what am I gonna do with this U po? So I started playing around with paint and I thought, oh, this is brown and orange and it looks like my three Bengal kitties. And so I started playing with it and pretty soon I had an abstract of three Bengal kitties. And then I had this art show came along and I entered it and I got second place and I was really happy with that. And the instructor, who is a really well-known professor up in our area, said, if you just had, didn't have that swash going out to the edge of the frame, you would have got the grand prize. And I thought, first time on UPO, maybe I could do this, you know. So that's how I got started with it, okay. Um, I wanted to tell you that Picasso said, and I'm going to read a little bit, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once he grows up. And UPO will help you stay a child because there's nothing you can do to the UPO that you can't redeem it. Maybe one or two small exceptions that you'll never try. But other than that, go ahead. Does that mean if you have control issues, it's better than your watercolor? If you have control issues, honey, this will cure it. Yay! This will cure it, okay? I'm not saying that you can't control the UPO because this is a fairly tight painting for me. And that is on UPO. It is painted directly on UPO. There was no drawing ahead of time, no stenciling done. It was starting at the top and working down. And you guys are welcome to. Wow. Yeah, that is a print of the painting. The painting is hanging at Toby Jones, which is the retirement home that that represents. All right? So, let me get started here. All right. First thing about Yupo, it was invented in Japan, okay? It was bought by the Yupo Company and is presently made in the United States but by the Japanese country. It is 100% polypropylene. It emits no emissions when it's recycled. It uses no trees when it's being made. However, you use a lot of this stuff and a lot of this stuff, so we make up for it there. Um, what else about it? It puts off no gases at all when it's being recycled in the proper way, which is straight into your paper recycle, your plastic recycle. So in that sense, it's very good. It is cheap. It is cheaper than watercolor paper. Okay, uh, the tablets that, uh, well, a sheet of UPO, which is 20 by 26, runs you $4, if that, all right? Bought in packs, it's usually the same price. Bought in pads, it's a little bit more expensive, but much cheaper than watercolor paper. So you're paying four versus seven dollars for a piece of hot press and just losing a few inches. Okay? Eight. Eight. Eight? Seven fifty. Oh. <laughs> All right, first of all, a UPO is made in pellets, just like your wood pellets for your fireplaces and things. And then it is pushed together and extruded out into long rolls and cut. The UPO is used for mayonnaise labels, the bracelet when you go to the hospital, all right? It is used for banners. It is used for a lot of different things. And the artist just seems to be a secondary market. However, they've learned that artists like it, so they now... Raise the price. Raise the price. <laughs> for the artist. <laughs> and charge, I'm sure, much more than they do to the companies that make banners. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there are several types of UPO. There's some that is just for laser printing, or, and there's also different weights. So I'm gonna have her wrap around. There's, there's two little exercises there to show you. One is the different weights and transparency. It comes in a translucent and an opaque white. It comes in two different heavinesses. There's a medium and then there's a heavy weight. I paint just on the medium. Yupo tends to, um, be heavy when you hang it from your artist, from your tape inside of a mat, and it wants to really pull more than that watercolor paper does. So if you use a full sheet of heavy UPO, you better really get that thing taped on the top, and you do not want to tape it around the sides because it will buckle. 
it will stretch. It has a little bit of stretch to it. And if you're living in Arizona, it's gonna have a lot of stretch because it doesn't like heat, all right? Okay, okay. But it survives. But it survives. But you don't wanna put a piece of tape on the bottom. What is your favorite weight? The medium weight. Medium? Yep, the one that you're looking at. Not the translucent, but the other piece. I didn't put the heavy in. The heavy's real heavy. Okay, uh-huh. How does the surface of UPO compare to, let's say, heavy, I mean, gel medium gloss? Is it basically the same? Basically about the same. Basically about the same. Yep, yep. But cheaper. Yeah, oh yeah, a lot cheaper than putting that on your watercolor paper. Because now you've doubled the price of your watercolor paper. So, yeah, much cheaper. Much cheaper. And there's another advantage to it. Okay, um, let's see what else here. Right white finish. Oh, okay. Paint. The light when it hits UPO is reflected back through your paint. The paint is never absorbed into the UPO, UPO, so all of your colors will look brighter. And I think if you look at some of these samples up here, you can see that they're really bright colors. If I painted those same things on watercolor, on hot press, it would not be as bright. All right, so just to let you know, okay, on that. Okay, I'm going to show you the true advantage of UPO first. No, no I'm going to show you that stuff. I have a, here's a little sign, let's do it on UPO. This was painted on UPO, originally a larger piece, as a Christmas card. And then I decided, oh, I'm going to fix it. So I sprayed my fixative on it, and I had outlined them with a Sharpie. And look what the Sharpie is, the purple. So I wanted to send that around so people, I really actually like the effect. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. Can we see it? Can we see the Sharpie? The purple. See the purple? Remind me of that. Okay, yeah. And this is Jupo. There we go. All right, I have a friend. Um, first of all, there's three artists. If you have the time, look them up. Number one, Mark Mahaffey. Okay, everybody knows his name. He works on Yupo watercolor, acrylics, he works on everything, and he's wonderful. He has a very different style from mine. I tried to do some of his techniques and was really flustered, so you're not going to get that from me. Um, another one is George James, who unfortunately has left us at this point, and he was the original king of Yupo, and he has a style that's very different from Mark Mahaffey. All right? You need to look him up. Third person is my friend Carlo Connor. She likes to do figures and she does them on UPO and Clayboard. And she gave me, she said I could do this pass. These are little copies that I took off the internet of two of her paintings. These two paintings were done on UPO, so if you want to pass those around. They're full sheets. I should just going to pass them all the way around. Oh, but what we're recording too. Oh, so. back, bring it back. Sorry. Okay. Here. Really quick. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Carlo O'Connor. Is it me in this one? Okay. And Carlo O'Connor, the lady in red. Okay. All right. O'Connor. All right. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. You mentioned fixative, and I wanted to know what, what do you use and does have a UV property? Okay. I do two things. Mark one and two. When I'm working on the painting and I'm sure I'm done, I like to sign with a Sharpie, a little tiny thin Sharpie on the UPO. But before I do that, I spray it with a light coat of this Krylon workable fixative. All right, a light coat. Then I sign it and make sure that I don't want any changes at that point. Then when it's dry, I spray the Krylon UV resistant clear acrylic matte finish. All right, it only takes about five minutes between layers, maybe one minute here, all right. Spray them outside. Do not spray them in your house unless you have a mask on because they're not people friendly, all right. So Tanya, how is this in the screen? These two are in, this layer? Top three. Top three, okay. All right, I'm gonna show you some samples here. This is untreated brush strokes. I have directly taken my paint, 
My it's brush? Uh -huh. yes, it is. I'll, I'll be your assistant. Yeah. Okay, oh, you, that's can, it. you talk. Yeah. Okay, and I just simply put down the brush strokes. That's how it's going to dry. All right, it's not going to bleed out. You can't wet the Yupo first. That will not work. Your, all your paint will slide off. In fact, I did a complete painting one time on a slight tilt. I had my ruler under it. I went upstairs, made dinner, came back down, and the entire painting was sitting on the paper towels that I had to absorb any runoff. The whole painting was down there. So, word to the wise. Oh, it stayed on the paper towels. It was good. But it was whole painting, small painting, but it went down there. Okay, the same brush strokes are here, but I missed it with water. All right. Okay. A third method that uh, Mark Mahaffey uses and George James is he will take the painted brush strokes, lightly mist, and take a foam roller and just and it will also be a flat layer. All right. There will always be little tiny spots that show up when you paint with Yupo, and I believe it, I believe it is the granules of the color and how big those granules are. For example, we know that French ultramarine has red granules in it and they're bigger than the, than the blue ones. And Can you so see that? Show up. Can you see the little spots? Okay, but I like that. That's part of the play, all right. Every time I work on Yupo, I clean it with alcohol first. Absolutely. All the way around the edges with paper towel and with alcohol because Yupo likes grease. It will take the grease from your fingers when you're putting it down and that will make a white spot on your painting. And there are ways to get rid of it when you're painting, but you, you don't want it all over the place. So that's a little bit of an issue. All right. What percent alcohol do you use? Which what? What percent alcohol? The lower, I said 70 some percent. Yeah. 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 Okay. This, I painted this off and I let it dry, just those brush strokes again. Then I took my punchinella, which we all probably know about. See that? Okay, and I laid it down and I pulled out the paint. I also took a damp brush and just swooped right across the dry paint, picked it up immediately. Don't swoop twice, okay? Just swoop once. What is, what is punchinella? Punchinella. This is, pass it around. That is tape that you get from your florist. I don't know what they use it for. Sequins. But it's great. It's left over from sequins being Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. I just, that's good I was told it was at the florist. Okay. I don't know if you can see the. There it is. Yeah, we'll hold that's it up better. Here. This is okay. a better way to do it. Why don't it. I come around? Yeah, I'll just explain it and I'll show the tools later. I'll All come right. around behind. Them. Okay. Help you. No, I can no. never see. Them. All right. I painted this tree with a watercolor stick. Do we all know what watercolor sticks are? Yes. All right. Um, and then I put water on it. And then I took some green watercolor sticks and I went into the wet area. This is all done with watercolor sticks. And believe me, the Yupo loves it. On this one, I wanted to show you how some colors, it was painted red or pink, and immediately into the wet paint, I, I brew, stroked in some gold, some quinacridin gold. I want you to know some colors push paint and some colors recede from others. On Yupo, it's to the extreme. Yupo lets that paint go where it wants to go. If it doesn't like that color next to it, it just shoves it out of the way, all right, okay? But you'll learn those colors and you'll take advantage of that, all right? Over here, this once again is Punchinella tape. I have just put it on kind of a mishmash of paint, so we'll ignore that. On this one, I laid different colors down. I put some blue, turquoise, pink, yellow, like that. Then I took my roller and I marbleized it. All right, look how smooth that came out. Okay. On this one is the Sharpie. I had it at a slight angle. When I painted over it, the paint kind of, it wouldn't cross the Sharpie line. So it gathered at the bottom and pooled. That's an effect you could use. On watercolor paper, it would have just gone right over the top of it. But at an angle, it stopped. And I thought that was kind of cool. All right. 
This one is alcohol dropped into damp paint, as opposed to alcohol dropped into wet paint. See the, the green difference? one. This one. Okay. This one is wet paint. This one was damp paint. This is wet paint, and I dropped the Punchinella ribbon on top of it and walked away. Came back later and pulled it off. So now instead of having little white circles, I have a white screen in the dark circles. All right? Oh, you got five of them. <laughs> All right, where are we at? Can we see it? All right, this is pulling other colors through wet paint. So for me, paint is either dry, damp, or wet. My brush is either da dry, damp, or wet. So this is damp paint, or wet paint, and I pulled the green through it. And you can see how it pushed, and yet the orange came back up underneath it. So it kind of created a blank area in the middle, and what orange was left just sucked right up the top. This is wet into wet. I just put it at an angle and paint it without letting up. anything dry. Back just up. let it flow down. Okay. There you go. All right. This one right here, see my finger? Right here, is using our artist tape. Excuse me. Using the artist tape, I put it down before I painted. Do not use masking tape. Masking tape will remove a funny layer off the UPO and leave a very fuzzy interior. I know they say there's, that it's not layered, but it is. Because if you do it, you will have a fuzzy layer, and when the paint hits that, you will have a dark mess. So I use artist tape, and this one right here is how it looks when it comes up. This I pulled a little paint into, a little more paint, and this one I finished out. All right, the background. I put down the hot pink on the background. I rolled it with a roller, all right? Then I took a piece of tissue paper, Kleenex, laid it on top took the roller and pushed hard. It removed a, val a value of paint. That was so easy. I let it dry. Oh, excuse me, I put the blue down first. There we go, I'm sorry. After, after the first rolling, it was dry. I painted the blue across. <laughs> then I put down the tissue. And you can see how it pulled it off. Then I waited for it to dry and I paint it over with the pink again. You can see through the transparent color. It glazes beautifully as long as you let it dry and you only go over it once. If you go over it twice, you have white because it agitates the paint because the paint did not go into the paper. So once you agitate it, it will come right up. Okay, that's the secret. This one right here is our rubber cement, our kids' rubber cement. I put that down first, all right? Then I painted it over with blue. I let it dry. I swerved over with some, I pulled up the rubber cement, and then I glazed over with the pink. So you can control areas, but you can continue to paint them. This one is our typical wax paper. <coughs> Dropped into it on UPO. You can see it has a much stronger effect on UPO. Warning to the wise, pull it off before it's completely dry. Do not let it sit or it becomes a collage. And you, that is the plastic likes, pla wax likes the plastic. It goes right onto it. All right. Okay, this one I painted the red. I misted the, misted the background. Painted the brown. I rollered that with a roller. And then I went ahead and with a dry brush, I pulled out the trees. And then I went back in with a square brush and painted the trees in. This was painted dark blue. Then I took a simple brush and pulled the mountains out. Very easy. After it's dry? After it was dry. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, that's fun stuff. All right. Here comes fun stuff. OK. I you laid have down. To back up again. <laughs> up again. Unless you want to turn it. OK. There? Good? Yeah. OK. On this one, where's my brush to point with? My arm's not that long. Okay, this is orange painted along this teal. Then I took a little square of UPO and I dropped it upside down into the teal while paint while it was wet. I waited three or four minutes. I picked it up. I just collaged it onto it after it was dry. Isn't that a cool effect? No, it doesn't look like it's collaged, but that is the same piece of paper that I picked up of here. All right. 
This piece right here, I had another piece over it originally and I had picked that up also. Okay. This is folded UPO, except you're not going to see a crease because I put that down for a minute. I just took it and lightly folded it and pulled it open. All right. And it beautifully printed the other side of the UPO. So that's an effect you can get. And you can see how beautifully the orange went right over the top of the green. And these were damp paints when I did it. Uh huh. Yes, I am using, I call paint, skim milk, milk, Sorry. half and half, and yogurt. That you half and half is about what I'm using in these cases. Okay? Okay. All right, this was red paper. I fixed it with a spray fix. Number one, is that the one I got? Yep. All right, and then I painted over with the red. Look at the neat effect. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. Okay. These are what I call silhouette paintings. I took a little piece of Yupo. This is a big piece, but it's not going to count. I painted the red. It was wet. I took a leaf, a piece of Yupo, and I think this was a lace doily. That was not very effective. And I dropped it down and I let it dry until it was almost dry. Picked it up. The leaf is very effective. If you're doing like a tree scene, like the bird's nest that I'm going to um, show for you today, if you had a stencil of a leaf or some leaves that were fairly sturdy from out in the garden, just drop them down and it gives you, and when you pick it up, it gives you an outline to work with, maybe some ribbing. It's kind of an interesting effect, all right? And kind of cheating. All right. On this one, I painted the center part. I did pull out a little bit with my Yupo. Then I cleaned outside with my paper towel and brought the yellow up to it. I let it bleed in a little bit. I didn't stop and let this dry at any point, okay? This is gesso into wet watercolor. Isn't that a cool effect? Now that, however, is not gonna come up without alcohol if you wanna change it. All right, you have to know that. But you can do some nice things with gesso. Sometimes when I do a seascape or I do shells or something like that, I will take a watered down gesso and I will pour it over the fixed Yupo painting, not with, the, not with the, the varnish on it, but with just the fixative. And it will bead, bead up beautifully and actually give me suds on the top of the water. It's very controllable. All right, this is fixative. In fact, here's an example of it. This was, this was uh, gesso painted over fixed watercolor. This is watercolor that has fixative sprayed into it while it was wet. It gives you a very different kind of a blossom effect, like a, um, what do you call it, dandelion, what do you call them? Lions. Yeah, the fluffy part. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Clocks. Clocks, there's the word I was looking for. Okay. This one I really like. I painted the gold. Hang on, we don't have, quite have that in the photo. Okay. There we go. That's it? Okay. I painted that with the gold. I took my tissue paper. I crumpled it. I pushed it down. I pushed it down. I pushed it down. All right? Now I want you to know this whole thing was gold. The whole thing was the gold color. Okay, I pushed it down, pushed it down, pushed it down. Then I took the brown and ran over the top. Pushed that down again. Okay? Then... I cleaned it very carefully with tissue in places, and I went in with acrylic paint, and I painted in my blues. The acrylic paint's water medium. You know, I don't know about you, but a lot of our clubs and organizations yes. are now accepting it. So, yeah. okay, so there we go. Okay. <laughs> you want to take your yeah. turn? <laughs> Changing helpers here. Yes. Okay. The orange one. You got it? Okay. That is gesso into fairly thick paint. All right. And then when it was dry, I took a Sharpie and I drew on top of it. And then I took my um, alcohol and I smeared the Sharpie around a little bit. And then I peeled back the paint and I got that white effect inside of that. It looks, almost looks like the earth or a moon or yeah. something. But I peeled the paint back off. 
That's how easy it is to peel paint off. All right. This one right here, the yellow and the designs with the punchinella were put down. And then I decided, nah, I don't know. So I took a very damp one of these and I rolled it a couple of times and it lightened up the whole thing. Then I never ever throw away scraps of Yupo paintings. <laughs> I use them for collage. That's collage on the top of it. All right. This one, my newest favorite. That's a dryer sheet after you've used it. Which one? The pink and purple. It is a dryer sheet dropped into the wet paint and allowed to dry and pulled back up. And I have torn the dryer sheet so I get those unusual edges and I love it. That's my new fun thing to do. Mary, is that dryer sheet used? It is used. Yeah, don't throw them away. There's lots of uses for that stuff. You know. <laughs> this is powdered paint dropped into wet paint. Okay, it was a kind of a soft metallic sage green and it's dropped right into it and allowed to dry. Okay. And then sprayed because it won't stay unless you spray fix it afterwards. How India you, ink. Uh, excuse me, Mary. Uh -huh. you excuse me, how do you adhere your collage pieces onto the collage? I do it with matte medium and I, so I flip them. I make sure they've already been fixed. I flip them over, put matte medium on, stick them right down. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I do use some matte medium once in a while with the uh, UPO. So, this is India ink, uh, and if you look carefully, you can see there's some darker areas. It's because the India ink does not ever fully dry on UPO, nor does any watercolor that is honey based. You cannot use Graham's paint. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm Graham. You cannot use Selene. Selene. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, but you cannot use them because they are honey based because it will not absorb in, they will never dry. It's like if you had honey on your counter, it will be sticky for the rest of its life mm -hmm. until it crystallizes and falls off. So it will not dry. So I just, if you're gonna use India ink, be careful. This was an experiment. It took four months to dry, and I used my, my, my um, hair dryer several times on it. I laid it in the sun. It gathered dust, cat hair, everything you can imagine but it did not dry. So I stuck my favorite part in there just to show and to remind me. This is fold over UPO where I have actually creased the UPO. I painted on this part of it, I folded it over and I got a result. And then I folded this one up and got a result. So you can do reflections. You can do an abstract scene of a beautiful pond and trees and then just flip it over to get where your reflections are, you know, and run a little water through it. All right, this is pulling yeah. out. Go ahead. How long does it take to dry? So Watercolor? you're thinking about folding something over. Oh, you've got a pretty good amount of time. If, it's, if your paint is like half and half, you've probably got about five minutes, ten, five to ten. It dries pretty fast. In this weather, it would dry pretty quickly, okay? I never take a hair dryer to it unless I'm desperate because the hair dryer, if I get too close, will make it buckle. It will return to shape, hopefully, but it has buckled. And so I don't like to do that. And when it buckles, it moves the paint away from the top of the buckle. Okay, so there's times where I've held it up here, way up here above the camera, and I've used a hair dryer in desperate moments, but it moves the paint, so you gotta be careful, okay? And it also makes puddles like we don't like really definitely. This I pulled, just pulled these out through a stencil after it was dry. Okay, that was paint that I painted beige and green. I rolled it to flatten it out, put the stencil down, different stencil, and pulled it out. All right? After it had dried. After it had dried, yep. Yeah, not when it's wet, okay? Here's our Sharpie again. It shows you how when I sprayed the fixative on it that it bled that purple. You can use that effect. Okay, but the Sharpie is not eligible for any watercolor show. Just know that. So when you're pulling out paint like the one above, is that just with water? And a cube water, or? just water. When we're pulling, the al only time you're gonna use alcohol is to clean your paper or do an occasional alcohol spritz because you really want that white spot. Um, and then trying to retrieve an area that's extremely 
hard, and I'll show you one that I did that with after I varnished it. I retrieved all the paint off of it and repainted the bottom so third. This water will bring it back to white like on that side. Oh, you're going to see that in a minute. All right. This is one of my favorite things. These two are the same, but I like both of them, so I want to show you. Okay. This whole piece was painted green. I took a piece of Yupo, and I went, eh, 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 down the paper. The sound effects are free. <laughs> then I cleaned off these areas that are now painted yellow, and I went in with yellow paint and painted them. And I did it when it was still kind of damp. Then you can see there's a slight bleeding, and I like that kind of lost edge in there. Same thing here, only this was a bit quicker. Just like that. And it creates those beautiful wave hill type patterns. All right? One last one. We may not even be painting here because I do have more stuff to show you. Okay. You can print with Yupo. You don't need a jelly pad. I mean, they're expensive. So, and you get two prints. You get two for your money. You print Yupo onto Yupo. You get your original print and you get a second print off of the original painting. This is the original painting. It transferred to this. All right? But you, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You couldn't have painted the whole thing in five minutes and have wet paint still. Yes, you. Oh, I'm a fast painter, honey. Seriously? Oh, yeah. Five minutes. Tanya? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I very seldom go back to a UPL painting on a second sitting. And I have some big pieces to show you. Okay, All right, same thing. This, this go, back a little, go back a little bit. Yeah. All right. So this was my original. Oh, I'm sorry. This was the original plate. All right. You paint your plate, which in your plate is a piece of UPO. You paint it. You don't fix it. You let it dry. All right. You get out another piece of UPO. You clean it with alcohol really well. You come back to the original one you painted and missed it ever so slightly. Then you plop down your clean piece of Yupo on top. You take a hard briar and roll it. Pull it apart carefully. Don't pull it sideways or at an angle. Pull it very carefully off from the top. And you have two pieces for the effort of one painting. All right, so that's not a bad thing, is that? Okay, and I will lay these out so you guys can look at them later with a list of what they are. All right, really quick, these are examples of particular things. I'm going to actually pass these around. Um, this is an example, these are all untreated paintings, which is why they're in plastic. So these are effects, um, this, is, this has been painted and then stamped with more Yupo, paint stuff dropped into it, just gives me a mismatch. Just gives me a mishmash of the thing. And I might use this for collage, I might use it for base of the painting. You can paint realistically. Here's a woman, all right? Yeah, you can sit that all the way down. All the way down? Okay. This is, this is a woman. I can probably hold these. This is a woman, and I have gone in with some um, very opaque watercolor paints. This one is Coastal Fog. Um, I brought in a little bit of the Jean Brion number one. This was misted over here. This had a dry brush scooping it off. I went in, I painted her all the face color and then started pulling out the lights and then adding some shadows in. So th there's pictures on both sides of this, okay? Here's where you painted in here. I took another piece of, let me check this out, okay. And then I, um, Placed another piece of painting. Oh, whoa, let me stop a minute. The original painting was the green one. All right. Then I cleaned off the sides here. When this was dry, I covered it with another piece of Yupo, painted these yellows and oranges up to it, which kept it from creeping under to, onto this. So now I've a faint, got kind of a two effect. You can also see I had wax paper laid in here. So this just has some interesting effects to it. This is a plain out straight painting, and uh, you'll see notes on these. One will say charcoal, one will say pencil. Um, I've used some drawing materials. This particular one is what? Watercolor pencil. Okay, or actually, it's a watercolor 
drawing pencil. It's not like a black or a red or a green. It's actually the graphite color. And I've actually sketched in my picture and then painted each part separately. All right? All right. This has to come back. That, they've already saw that. That was that one piece of paper that went around that was blank and it had something on it. Okay. That, that was gel medium heavy. And I use it for textures. And that texture will create um, a beautiful rock painting, which I'll show well, I'll show you right now. Once it's dry, this is what you can do with it. All right. Those rocks are painted, but they're painted over that texture. And a lot of what you're seeing, the paint fell into those recesses because of that texture. Here's another one. I'm going to have to put the Southwest in here. I did this one just for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. It's gel medium heavy gloss. I tried some. Yeah, that's what's on that paper. I tried some with the matte and it's stained. I didn't like that because I ended up with this, I couldn't pull the white off back down to the white and I wanted to be able to do that. And are you applying that with a palette knife? I'm applying it with a credit card. With a credit card. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And a palette knife would work. It's just credit cards are easier. Mm -hmm. So you've seen these two. So they can, if you want to pass them around, you're welcome to. If you want these passed around too? Or just... sure. 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 Okay. So real quick, I'll show you this one. This, I started something. I had rubber cement underneath it, and I didn't like it, so I wiped it off. The rubber cement kept a color. So now I have a choice. I can blot that after I paint it again and keep that color, or I can leave it, do my painting, pull the rubber cement up, and have white. So I have two choices. It stained the rubber cement. So that kind of gives me another thing to think about. All right. This, can you see it? This is a four hour painting. All right? Four hours. With a UPO. All right, there are no tricks. This is just painted with the little bit of whites of the birch trees and the mountains pulled out with a dry brush. Or a damp brush. I dip it in the water, I dry it off with a piece of paper towel. I pull one time, clean the brush, dry it off again pull one time. If you pull more than one or two times, or two or three times, you're going to have color in your brush, which you're going to reapply onto your paper, okay? You can pass them around. You want to pass this around? If, I don't mind passing them around if nobody bends them. <coughs> Maybe we'll just set them out. Okay, you can set them out. We'll just set them The drip effect. Uh -huh. Is it you're spraying something on it, or how do you get that feeling? That's, that usually, that's usually a water spray, that I've yeah. sprayed water on it, right? Yeah. And you've got the dark edge yeah. on it. And, and if I don't like that, right. here's what we do. But you also have the spots from the paint in the sky. Oh, yeah, I do. Is, that's that's not what she's talking about. Yeah, that is what she's talking oh, about. Okay. There are spots in the sky. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, if you want, they would probably, no, they won't. All right, this is another one where I have used the, only this time I used bathroom caulking. Instead of using the gloss, I went to the hardware store and I used clear caulking because it's cheaper, all right? And you want the kind that paint doesn't stick to, all right? Because some of them will try to pick up the colors and they do that purposely, so ask there. But it's much cheaper than buying that gel medium at 25 bucks a jar. So it is in the area of the mountain only on this one, all right? These two are not finished. I used the gel medium against on the rocks, and once again, it was caulking. Good. I'm going to drop it even further. I couldn't hear what you were saying because I was so taken with your artwork. Can you repeat what you said? Aww, <laughs> you come home with me. <laughs> I'm so mesmerized. I missed that last bit. What did you say? Okay, I used that caulking down in the rocks, all right, and then. When I, I let the caulking dry, and that takes a couple days, okay? And don't leave it out in the heat. I'm not wondering if that's why some of mine turned. I did some caulking examples to bring down, and some of them turned yellow because we've been here for about two and a half days, and they've been sitting in the car. So heat apparently does do something to the caulking. All right, 
But oh. I have white caulking I've used and it was fine. It stays white. Good. Okay. Well, there's your answer. White caulking. I've been using clear. So, okay. The sky. I put the caulking down. I let it dry. Then I went in here with a really thin blue. I painted it all over like I do. Just like that. Okay. And I took my water and I sprayed it. And then I go like that. And I control where it goes until I get a pretty even coat. And then, once again, here we go with the Kleenex. All right. I started blotting out my clouds. Let's see, can you see it? Okay. And then for the waves coming up, watch this. <laughs> Do it light. That's all that took. And that's there. Then I went in and I painted the brown over the rocks. Um, this blue, actually, I was, I was thinking that I actually went in and painted the blue all the way down and then removed over the rocks and then went back into the rocks with a brown. And then I sprayed a little bit of white, not sprayed, but took the toothbrush and white gesso and I gave myself a little bit of, of foam in here through the rocks. Okay? All right, that one's gone. This one also is not done. They are fixed, but they're not sprayed with varnish. I have a plan for these. This is the same thing, more thought out, more caulking, pulling paint, wish, 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 tap, 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 life is good, no gesso. <laughs> okay, this took about, other than putting the caulking down, five minutes, maybe 10. So where, it has the caulking been put? The caulking, see these lines through here? Okay. The caulking created that. So I very deliberately took my, let's play it, pretend this is a credit card, and I put it down the way I wanted the rocks to go. Okay, leaving some edges in there and also leaving some areas where there was no caulking so the paint can kind of travel through it. So then I have to take what I get, okay, and work with that. What I'm going to do with these two, they're going to become host to a lighthouse, both of them. And I'm going to be painting that with acrylic. Okay. I found that's a very good seller down at Ocean Shores. <laughs> All right. Remember when I showed you that one where we dropped um, alcohol into wet and damp paint? This is unfixed. Take me just a second to get it out. Now you notice I have wax paper on every, on the unfixed paintings, or they're in a bag. There's a reason for it. Wax paper will not stick to the painted UPO after it is dry. After it is dry. So between all my UPO paintings that I'm working on, I keep layers of wax paper. Okay, and I reuse it. You know, I have tons of scraps of wax paper. All right, these are oyster shells. The way I got the white in the beginning of the oyster shells was by dropping dots of the alcohol down. It pushed the paint aside, gave me the white spots like on the diagram I showed you, and I made oyster shells out of them. All right? Here's another example. You can pass this one around. It's shells that I pulled out, and the oyster shells were created with the alcohol to start them. Okay? This little puppy gets covered up because I don't like the composition on it, and that has to get fixed. Okay, so you get to see my errors too. All right, stencils. Let's show this one first because it's easier. Your Christmas card. My Christmas card, you're right. You're right, except that actually was a different one because I painted stars in it. Okay, I cut out a swan. All right, and I set it to the side, and I cut it out of UPO. Okay, and then I took a little bit of water in the back of the stencil, just a tiny bit of water, and this is a swan, pretend this is a swan, and I flipped it over, and I dropped it down on my clean UPO. Then I started painting all around the swan, and I let it dry. And then I picked, I almost, almost dry. And then I picked it up and I had a white swan that had a little bit of color in it. And I took a damp brush and I molded my swan 
This is about a one hour painting, not counting dry time. You pass that around. And then for Christmas, she said, I don't have a Christmas card, so she splattered snowflakes I, all I put over. snowflakes on, I, I did a second one, actually. I've done two because yeah. I did it as a demo once. So the other one, I put snowflakes on it and I printed it for my Christmas card. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, this is one of my favorite things I like. This is done with stencils also, all right? I painted the whole background. I took my three stencils, which were the koi. I dropped it on wet paint. Now, now I'm dropping it on wet paint. Not, I'm not painting up to it, because that's a much simpler image. I drop it down. I wait till it's almost dry. I carefully pull the fish up. And I have an outline of these fish. Then I go to work on the, on the fish itself. I pull in some of that paint. I remove some of the paint until I get them all molded. I allow it to dry. I take my orange and my yellow, very thick, like whipped cream or yogurt, and I paint the orange and the yellow in. I have used netting in here to pull out some of the orange to give it a scale effect. I, my original stencils didn't have all those fins, I want you to know. That I pulled out with a, dry, with a damp brush, all right? Then I fixed it. This is a good example to show you watered down gesso. Then I took watered down gesso and with a brush, I pulled across to give the effect of additional water over the top of them. That can go around. Is your stencil another piece of Yupo? It is another piece of Yupo, yep. And a very easy way to cut it out of that Yupo, draw it on paper, wet your piece of paper, put it on the Yupo, and cut fast. It will stick to the Yupo long enough to let you get that stencil cut out, okay? It works really great, <laughs> okay. This is the bird's nest, which I was going to do as your, dupe, as your demo. I don't know if we're going to have time to do it or not. But I laid down the yellow, fairly thick. I did not use the roller. I just rock and rolled my paper until it came out really smooth. All right. And then put it down flat. While it was wet, I took a nice flat brush. I got some more paint, and I started painting. Now. Because it's wet, it will put down the color that I am painting on top of it while removing the color that's under it. All right? Very cool technique. So I can, I left a little blue in here from the original sky that I put back in here. But I can, like this kind of reddish here, it picked up the gold underneath. Some of these areas picked it up. If I don't like something, I can go in with just a damp brush. I can pull it out as much as I want. I can leave a little color, take it all the way down to white, whatever I like to do. Leaves, these leaves had actual leaves. All right, see that? Those were stencils, not all of them. You don't want to do all of them. You don't ever want to do everything all the same. So I painted some leaves and I dropped a leaf down here. I dropped a leaf here, I dropped a leaf here, dropped a leaf here, and dropped a leaf here. And if you, you can take this one, Pastor, I don't care about this one. Okay, that is about a two hour painting. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Should we just do it this way? <laughs> it's okay. Okay. You can see I have a love of ultramarine blue and golds and yeah, okay. Everybody has their own colors, things. And burnt, um, Q burnt orange, my new favorite color. I've replaced burnt sienna with it. Uh, Quinacrin and burnt orange. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she says. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when they said they were running out of quinacrin, I think I bought the mother load. So yeah. if you want to come any, just come see me. It will be might be double price, but all right. <laughs> okay. On this painting, I used a lot of different effects that I showed you on those boards, but there's nothing physical that was added to it. They were all manipulation effects you know, like pushing something down on it or taking, removing through a grid. And then when I do that, when I do use a trick, I try to disguise the trick. I pull through the punchinella here and then I take my brush and kind of mash some of it out. Same thing here. I wanna make sure that that person who looks at my painting doesn't say, well, I know what she did because anybody that looks at your painting should be saying, how did they do that? That's what they need to say. Uh-huh. It, it looks granulated at the bottom like yeah. sand, so how yeah. did you do it that? It is. Part? 
Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Um, I put down, I got it all painted. I spray fixed it. Then I took some dark blue that I had put a little bit of uh, that burnt orange in and I rolled over the fixative. And I got that granulation because it doesn't want to stick to the fixative. Then I fixed it again. And I put down the gesso with the water to give it a water effect. So why did I do this? I took a picture of this. And when I took the picture, I was standing over it. And the shadow from my arms gave me that shadow. And I went, that's better than my painting. How am I going to get that shadow in there? That's how I got it in there. OK? So there's another little thing. Photograph your artwork as you're doing it. Put it in black and white. Look at it upside down. Play with it. That will get your little pencil that you have on your phone that moves things around. You don't have to go to your computer and do all that work. You can do it on your phone. It takes you two or three minutes. Shoot a picture of it. It's just like using a reducing glass. Do you remember the old reducing glasses? Nobody remember that? There used to be something that looked like a magnifying glass, but it's called a reducing glass. And if I looked at this thing, my picture would look this big. And I could see all the faults. Same thing with your camera. Okay? Very effective. This one I'm not going to pass around because it's been entered in a show. All right. Um, okay. So everything you've seen has been fairly, fairly realistic. I've got a mat on this one because it's entered in a show too. So this is an abstract version of the paint. Oh boy, Tony, can you help me on this one? Or somebody? I want to go this way. Oh, turn it. Turn it this way. This is an abstract version of the painting I just showed you. Okay, I'm gonna drop it down. And in addition on this one, you're going to see that I went in with more drawing tools. You can use. Charcoal is acceptable. Watercolor pencils are acceptable. What's this one? I have the black, okay? And I also have the ones that look like lead pencils. Watercolor crayons, acceptable. Let's get out here. Charcoal is considered water it's, Well, It's because you can remove it with water. Oh. No problem. They don't say it has there to be paint. Go. They don't say it has to be paint. And the charcoal, has a lovely effect when it starts blending with your other colors. It does this nice smoky, sultry kind of thing. And I really like that. That's what you're seeing here. And you're seeing it here because it picks up and it goes. And I really like that. So this is the abstract version of those rocks I just showed you. And then I'm going to show you one last one. And if we have time, I'll show you how pink this is. This is big. This is a full sheet of UFO. Oli oli. <laughs> pull this off. I can put it back on later. I just have to make sure it doesn't go to the painting. Okay. Wow. Let's put this under the camera. This just got accepted into Northwest Watercolor Society, but the show hasn't opened yet. And I call her um, the C Nymph and her wards. Now, I'm, I have a special reason for showing you this, not just bragging, all right? <laughs> when I first painted her, I, I thought, well, first of all, let me tell you how I started. I started the whole thing with that goldish color, a little bit of reds up in here, splatter, splatter, drop some blue, got out my spray gun, spray, 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 roller, 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 roller. <laughs> and then I thought, now, what am I going to do with this? So then I started playing with the abstract designs on it, okay? And then I thought, you know, I would like to do a portrait on top of this. So I painted this woman, and as her hair grew, I thought I saw little shells in there, so I made them into shells, all right? I thought I saw a seahorse head, so I put a seahorse, and I thought, okay, the sea nymph with her wards. So I finished it that way, put in more shells by removing paint. I used some of that netting, I printed some of this, I painted some of the netting, all right? But the hand, bad mama. So I didn't do my research. I didn't have a model, a person, a husband come and put his hand up. So the arm went straight down. 
And I thought, that does not, I entered at a show, and then my girlfriend said, you know, that's not possible. I said, it looks awkward. She says, you try it. So I tried to make my arm go straight up, which put my hand under my chin. So, and she said, I don't like the, the ghoul, the monster you have. I said, what monster? She said, this one right here that has lips and eyes and a mouth. And I said, and he's going like this at her. And I went, oh my gosh, always put it in your camera. Always look in your camera. I would have seen it in my camera. So, I took, now I had already fixed it, varnished with a heavy coat of varnish. I got out my paper towels, I got out my rubbing alcohol bottle, and I went to work on her. I removed everything from here down, I removed the monster, I repainted all of it, blended it by painting a little bit into the already fixed area, fixed her again, and off she goes to a new show and she gets in. So you can correct things. You can correct things. And that's what I love about the UFO. You could not do that. You could scrub back your watercolor, but you have a really good chance that you're going to pull up the paper itself mm -hmm. so that when you paint on it, you're going to have a whole different surface, and everybody can tell you if you really scrubbed in. Arches probably let you scrub better than anybody, but if you're dealing with Fabriano Stonehenge, don't try to pull up the Stonehenge if it's dry. The Stonehenge watercolor paper. If it's dry, do not even attempt it. If it is wet, you can lift it, which with arches you can't. So learn about your papers, what you can and can't do, okay? Kilimanjaro is really... Is it tough? It's probable. It's very probable. Is it really? Yes. I will try that. I will try that, because I think that's awesome. Now, do we have time for fast? Uh, yes. We do. All right. <laughs> I have a board here, I can do that. Can you take that together? All right, so let's show you how easy it is to correct you, Paul. I painted this four years ago. Four years ago. All right. And can I ask you one more favor when you're done? Will you put all that crap into um, that plastic bag that's there? A plastic bag. All right, four years ago I painted this. All right, here's another neat secret about UPO. You don't have to tape it down. Little water, little water on the back, okay? Oh, and by the way, UPO always bleeds color to the back, so after you've fixed your paintings, go and clean the back of it because that paint will transfer to another painting if you've got them stacked. So always clean the back off. All right, I have just put some water on the back of my board. Plop. Now, if I want to rock and roll this painting, it's not going anywhere. Look at that. Now it will dry up eventually. In three hours, I might have to redo it. But that's great. What a, what a delight, all right? Okay, three-year-old painting, four-year-old painting, actually. And I painted it in the sunshine at a fair. Oh, oh, no. Stop. Oh, yes. The <laughs> sound effects are great. <laughs> she did that in five minutes. Finger cleaning. <laughs> now, because I've had it on here so long, I do have some ghost images. All right. Okay. Had that been burning? <laughs> What's that? Had it been burning? No. No. Okay. No, no, no. I would have to use alcohol to do okay. that, yeah. And I am going to use it on alcohol anyway to see if I can get more color off. But on a whole, that's a paintable surface. <laughs> and especially because with Yupo, I really don't like to have a lot of white, white area like that horse on the end because I have found that if I photograph it for a show, it doesn't photograph white. And if you play with it, photographs a gray. And if you photograph it and try to, quote, sharpen the image, then the painted part of the UPO doesn't look good. So I try not to leave white. So actually, I would love to have that ghost image. But I am going to really quickly see what happens. I don't know. I have not done this on a piece. Is that 70%? Yep. Yep, that's 70%. 
90 would probably work better. I just don't buy it. Nope, we're stuck with it. That's it. We're stuck. Okay, so you saw that. Now it really doesn't want to come up. But see, it made the back wet. So now we're going to pull that color off so I don't get it. So as if you much have as a ghost well. image on one side, can you use the other side? Yes, yes. As long as you can clean off those edges, it's just absolutely. In fact, you can paint both sides. And so if you don't like it and it doesn't sell, just turn around and just put the other part in the mat. <laughs> so before you start painting, you clean your U-Hole with alcohol to yes. make sure there's dust or whatever. Yes, so finger print. Okay. So I have a piece of UPO, very handily. Also, I use UPO as under my painting board because I know that way I won't mess up my top of my table and I can clean it up. All right, so first things first, water. Okay. This is what, what's that? You don't even have to go to the edges. Just nope. Oh, don't go to the edges because that water will suck up it's onto the edges. Yeah. Excuse my sniffling. A little plant life around here I'm not used to. I don't have to use that much alcohol. I actually have a spray alcohol, but I don't want to be spraying it and having you guys cough and gag. So, all right. <laughs> Particularly the edges because that's where everybody handles it. Maybe it's the alcohol that makes my nose run. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> How All right. do you cut your UPO? How do I cut it on? If you've got a full sheet, you want to make it into eight by tens or something like that. Paper cutter. Paper cutter. Well, how do I fold it? No. Cut oh, cut, cut it. Paper cutter. Yeah, you can do it with scissors too. You can do it in exacto. I just happen to have a paper cutter. So, all right. So let's get this out of the way. Get this out of the way. I do um, cover my palette with wax paper. If I don't paint with it for a week or two, I might put alcohol on it before I, before I spray some alcohol on it, keep it from molding. Your paints will mold, particularly in Washington, probably not here, but in Washington, they'll mold. So if I spray it with a little bit of alcohol, um, that works really well. But if you spray it with too much, it will make your paints gummy like really gummy, sticky. So you have to be careful. So what kind of paint are you using? Um, these are either Windsor Newton, Daniel Smith, or Hobart. Mostly Daniel color? Smith, because he's up there. Yeah, the watercolor? Yeah, watercolor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, brushes, brushes, brushes. I'm gonna get right into a sky. What kind of sky? So you see how, see how gooey my paints are? You cannot paint with Yupo with dry paint in your palette. Go ahead. We can see the paint. Uh, the oh, you want to see the palette? Gotcha. Okay. Is that pretty good? Yeah. And then I'm going to move this here so I have a place to put my stuff. All right. I always have two waters, one clean, one dirty. And hopefully to stay that way. All right. Now see the little white lines? That's not thick enough paint. See the little white areas, the little squiggles and stuff show up. <coughs> Saying, what is she doing? Mary, yeah. will you have brayer rollers tomorrow? Well, I have what? Will you have your rollers, brayer rollers? For I have a whole set of them over here. Don't anybody buy, if you're in the UPO, don't buy anything because you can either use mine or you can use what's on the table over here. Yep. I brought enough brayers for everybody. Wow. Not brayers, but the plastic rollers. Oh, yeah. And I don't ever wet them while I'm using them. I wait until the end of the day. I dry them on a piece of paper towel. And then I clean them at the end of the night and let them sit out to dry. Yeah. Okay. Let's get another little more color in there. I don't see if I can unbrighten it a little. There we go. Did you just add phthalo? I added a little bit of lunar, lunar, lunar blue. Lunar? Lunar, L-U-N-A-R. Oh, mm -hmm. that's a thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add a little 
pink and go into the woo, what's there? Just <laughs> a little bit of color in there. Notice how the brush just choo -choo. try to keep that water reasonable. All right, now that's just water. This is water. I can see I have a few sticky areas, but I might just work them into. Now, see what's happening already? All right, now I'm going to play. I see one spot, two spots that are not going to be changed. To be fairly smooth on this one, okay. yeah, without using the roller. But I don't want it to be um, like a flat color because I'm going to be painting over it. So there's some places I'm not too worried about. <coughs> All right, I'm going to let it settle like that. Yeah. All right. I'd be interested to know if you have to make adjustments for this dry climate. That I'm going to be interesting to know too. Yeah. <laughs> Normally right now I'd go upstairs and make myself a cup of tea and come right back down. So what, two minutes in the microwave and then come back down. Could you use a hair dryer on the cool? Setting. You probably could, but it's still going to move the paint. Yeah. Okay. okay. It won't buckle it, but it'll, the air will push the paint over. It's just like if I took a straw, and went, it would send the paint out, which also is a nice effect. I didn't actually show you that at all. Okay. Maybe I should, shouldn't have done that. I cleaned more than I wanted to. Mm. Let's go back out there. Let's go back out there. It says, okay, I'll do that for you, lady. Yeah. With my UPA, I always planned at least about a half an inch for a mat to go over because it likes to creep out. If you use a quarter inch, it might decide to creep the bottom corner out. Okay. All right, now, we're still pretty wet. <coughs> I'm going to put a little bit of some dark greens up here where I might have, and notice I'm going to just use the brush in a kind of a, abstract type of leaf. Are you working towards an image or are you trying to repeat what you wiped off? Nope, I'm working towards an image. Well, something similar to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so you'll know what I'm, I should have said that. Okay. So if it, if it had dried a little bit more, it wouldn't be spreading? It wouldn't be spreading as much, yeah. Or if you took thicker paint? What's that? If you took thicker consistency. If I had thicker paint, it wouldn't spread quite as much either. Yeah, right. You're right about that. All right. Now, I'm waiting for, I'm hoping this will dry in a few seconds. Enough that I can work on it. So maybe I'll just add some more. Up in here. I usually work without a drawing, so not all my stuff comes out well balanced, and then it becomes cut up into Christmas cards or cards. <laughs> <laughs> but I do that for a reason. I find because of the way the UPO acts, that I can um, I don't I can respond to the UPO as having to say, oh, but I don't want that there because I got this drawn out on my drawing, and I don't you're not doing it for me. So this way, I can just respond to the UPO. There was a wedge in that bag of stuff you put away, a plastic wedge. You see if you can find that. So pencil marks for drawing are not coming out? No, the regular pencils. Yeah, if you want to draw, you do it with a watercolor pencil and you have a little water so that your point has been wet a little bit and do a light color like the yellow and don't press very hard because it will score the paper. Mm -hmm. That's one bad thing. Okay, thank you, sweetheart. I'll be using that in just a second. All right, now, stop doing what you're doing. Do we have a hair dryer? We do. Do we? I hate, I mean, I have the hair dryer, but I don't have an extension cord. I hate to say, oh, okay, let's come back in 10 minutes. Have, it, as it is. 
Have you ever tried fluid acrylics? Yeah, often, yes. Often yes. Because they're. You have a well, you're, on you're pretty much stuck with that. I mean, acrylic goes great on UPO. There's no problem with that at all. But you can't pull it off unless you get your alcohol out. So, and that it was, it took me almost an hour to get that bottom of that third painting to. Okay, super. Yeah, I'm going to try and dry it, and that way we can get on with this. <laughs> a little bit, not much. Walk out to the parking lot. Yeah, yeah that's true. I should take a walk it around, and everybody have a coffee break. That'll probably take care of it. You know, I can fetch you a cup of tea if you'd like. No. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> okay. Super. I saw I saw a great Zoom thing the other day. Zoom has figured out how to cut out the sound of a hair dryer. Yes. When you use a hair dryer, isn't that great? And you can still everything else is there, but the hair dryer is not. It's great. You can also um, get quieter hair dryers from the pet stores apparently. Oh. They're selling blow dryers that are not as loud because the animals don't like it. And probably not so as hot. I haven't hot. tried it yet, but I want to go get one. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> idea. It bother me. Yeah. 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 Sorry. <laughs> I can move the paint, watch this. See that? See that effect? Is that damaging the paper? It's not damaging it, but it might make it stretch, which I really don't want it to do. But this is a demo, and we're going to get this done. It won't take more than about 30 more seconds. That did it. I'm pretty sure that did it. All right. All right, now, a difference. I like flat brushes a lot on the UPO. How do you test if it's dry? What kind of bristle? How do you test if it's dry? It, it's not completely dry. Oh, okay. But it's got some dry areas, and I think that's all I'm going to need. And I'm going to get an um, in-between size brush real quick. Very special lady made me this brush holder, Betty Mears. Yeah. All right, so now I'm going to pick up some of my favorite color, the Q Gold. Would it be possible to show the whole color palette? No. Um, let's see what we get. What do you get now? A couple more inches. Yeah, you can move a couple more inches. Oh, okay. All right. Not even that much. Yep. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. Well, now I see things are drying over here, so I'm going to do something else first. Rubber, rubber spatula, you know, the puller. Oh, it's painting, it's, it's too dry. <laughs> Terrific! <laughs> but you can pull leaves out if you do it right. We'll go back in. Yeah, it's too dry to do it. It's actually pulling all the paint up. That's how interesting. Okay. I should have done that while it was still damp. All right, but we'll fix it. So... When I go in to do something that has shape, I don't just go like that. That right thickness. I will put it up, and I will push, and I will turn. Okay, now it's painting right over the blue. If I went in to paint over it. Look at it. It's pulling it off. All right. So I'm just going to do some real quick. If the blush brush splits, that's fine with me. I want a little bit of that color. Okay. 
I like to keep some of that sky color in there. She makes it look easy. I can't do this. Yes. <laughs> Is that like a one inch size brush? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know that when you paint um, a stem or a, a tree that you always arch up because otherwise it means you're standing above the tree. If you arch it this way, it means you're above the tree. If you arch it up, that means that you're below the tree, your eye level's a little below. Might actually take another one off of here. Too wet. Okay. And I am not shaking. I'm trying to do that. I really am not. <laughs> It's a deliberate kind of, well, there's a little shape to it, but. Q Gold is a pusher. Notice how I clean the brush. I'm lightening areas. A bit too much. Somebody said, but you use such thick paint. You use so much paint. It's okay. You don't use much paper. You know, the same piece of Yupo could last you 10 years if you're not doing something with it, other than painting on it. There is, and I don't know the name of it. it. There is a competitor, and I don't know what it is. Yupo pretty much is just Tyvek, you know. So um, I have heard about it, but Yupo is so cheap. I'm not going to try to, because it's so finicky about what you can do and how it does and how it reacts. I don't want to try to learn, like, another paper. It would be like painting on Arches Today and Fabriano Tomorrow. Your brain just... You know, that's a lot of information to stick. You want to have a gut response to your paper, to your surface. And a gut response to your paint, and that's why I like Daniel Smith. Because I know that the Daniel Smith, um, like the French ultramarine, I know that it's going to granulate. I know I'm going to get some beautiful tones in there. I know what yellows I can mix it with it, that it's not going to get horrendous, you know, green. So I'm not a real fan of green, even though you're seeing green. But. Let's get some brown stone down there. I want to get that nest in too so I can show you how to take care of that. And I could actually just come in here and pretty much do that and then take my Q gold. Aussie red is another, that red gold is another one I like. And I could take my brush. Let's get some real removal here. And this will be the removal painting for the next class. <laughs> Anything painted this fast would be a removal painting. 
But you can see how I can just, it's interesting that I'm painting right over my blue. I'm not paying any attention to, because I know that if I don't like that blue coming through, I can paint over it. I can, I can pull it right out and paint over it so I don't have any effects of the blue underneath. You can come sit down, honey, if you want. Yes, my sweetie. That, oh, he's been a miracle for me on this trip. I don't know if you notice I'm not wearing an armband for a funeral. I am, had a plate put in my wrist about six weeks ago, and it's not real functional. I don't have very good dexterity with it, or I have no ability to carry anything. Every once in a while I forget, and that's why the black band is there. Because if I reach for something and I'll go, oh, that's more than five pounds. Mm. Yep. All right, now let's get this in so that. Use those white spots for pieces of branch. Oh, that was nasty. Drop some of that brown down there. So you just got a little twig going off of it. some of these I'll do with a light green. I don't worry about keeping my paints real clean either. I cleaned them for this trip. I have? Okay. All right, I'm going to show you one last real thing real quick then. I would have painted in some more leaves here. See how I can put we the can light in there. Sit and watch you for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so to get really quick to get the um, the branches, it's still pretty wet, but I've got a pretty clean brush, and I would just pull out not the branches, but the pieces of wood in the bird nest. Okay, and I would just do a better design of it than than that, and then. If this were dry, I would wet this. Mm -hmm. This is wet, so I'm using it dry, okay? And I balance my hand, and we just go in here, and we clean an egg out. Leave a little color to it. And maybe another one, do a little overlap. That just not shape like an egg. And when I get them all nice and clean, I'll pull a couple branches over it. And then I'll add a little bit of blue speckle to it and stuff. And I might even take these Q-tips and add some reflection in here. You know, pull another little spot. 
that clean water was for pulling out, which I didn't do much of. So you get some heavy duty light spots in here. So anyway, there you go. All right. I apologize that most of it was talk, but you can see that with all the things you can do with UPO, we would be here till tomorrow morning if I tried to demo all that. <laughs> so there are some um, notes, you know, if, if Tanya really wants, I'll give her um, a packet. She can write, you know, she can copy some things that say different things you can do with it. So, okay. All right. Thank you guys very much. She also has cards available for purchase. Thank you.